Hey guys, this is Z2, and today I'm going to be giving you my second deck guide. And today we have a classic, the mid-range druid. And speaking of classic, I'm going to be giving a little bit of history um, about the, the druid class, basically. I mean, in the beginning, people really didn't know what they were doing. They're kind of just throwing decks, um, just trying to put, you know, value cards in their decks. But then there became a specific archetype for. Um, Druid, and the f very first one was the Ancient Watcher Druid, where you figured if uh, if cards like you know Keeper of the Grove were must includes in Druid, then you could put Ancient Watcher in and basically, you know, have something like essentially Yeti on turn two with that. And then people also put like things like Innervate to help out the deck and uh, make it easier to get you know your Yeti on turn two because they actually put Yetis in the deck. And the next iteration was if you. People thought, hmm, we have ramp cards like Innervate. What if we put Wild Growth in there as well? And then put a bunch of big cards. And that worked for a little while. But then people thought, wait a second. Why do we need the big cards? Why don't we just like tempo the opponent out of the game, play Wild Growth, and we can just kill him super fast uh, with Fortune Nature Savage Orb. Actually, I, I, I kind of skipped a step. It went from ramp to, hmm. Let's put this Force Nature Savage or combo in for a win condition. And people thought, well, let's make it even faster and put two in there. So that's how basically Midrange was born. Um, to this day, people still kind of, they can run two Force Nature, two Savage or, uh, they can run one Force Nature, two Savage or, things like that. And then Ram is obviously still alive as well, but it, it comes and goes. But Midrange has always been super popular, super powerful. It was one of the most powerful decks um, about a year ago. And. Since then, it's gone through some changes. Um, Next Ram has changed it, GVG changed it, but you know the core of the deck is the same. Um, you're always going to have, uh, looking at the screen, your Keeper of the Groves. Um, you're going to have your Force Nature Savage Roar. You're going to have usually your your ramp to get up to those cards like um, Wild Growth and Innervate. And you're going to have your Ancient Lores because those are super powerful. And usually, Jewel of the Claws, so I've seen some lists that don't have it. Um, so yeah, basically the point of the deck is to, um, you know, out tempo your opponent. Like it's not very good against aggro, like straight up aggro that tries to kill you super fast. But uh, because in that sense you're trying to be defensive, and it's not really good to being defensive. This deck is good at killing people. Um, so it can work against mid range to like kind of out race your opponent, and it can work against control, where you know a lot of control decks are good at killing small units, but it's a little bit harder to kill big units. Like for instance, you know, warrior. They only have four hard removals, but then this this deck has a bunch of you know mid range minions that are pretty hard to get rid of, um, and you can pretty much tempo a warrior out of the game before they can get their big eyes out. Um, occasionally, if you get a really fast start, you can beat aggro, but uh, a lot of times that's uh, not very good matchup. For instance, this deck is not very good against uh, mech mage. It's not very good against face hunter, um, unless but you know there's things you can do to to change that. Um, speaking of changes to the deck. Uh, today, um, Black Rock Mountain is going to come out, and that's going to change a lot of stuff in the meta. It is it is 31 cards only, but there are 31 pretty powerful cards, so could change a lot of the things you see. Um, there's going to be, you know, dragon meta, or dragon themed uh, decks and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think uh, with those cards that mid-range druid is going to change very much. You might see something like, you know, Hungry Dragon, for instance, since a pile of Shredder, but for the most part, I don't think it's going to, or I should say, Midrange Druid is not going away anytime soon, even with these new cards. Um, but it will kind of change, alter its place in the meta. Um, so without further ado, let's go through the cards. Um, yeah, so starting from the top, Innervate. Innervate uh, is a great card. Uh, basically allows you to um, Get a hand tempo. That's basically the point of the card, right? Get a hand tempo for, and you're, on the one hand, you could say you're sacrificing card advantage, um, but on the other, if you're if you're innovating out big cards, or, um, you know, first of all, those cards can two for one anyway, so basically it's fine. You're not really suffering any card disadvantage, and on the other hand, on the other the other thing to think about. Is that sometimes by using tempo to get ahead in the board, sometimes your opponent has to use multiple cards to get the tempo back. So, like sometimes, like it can be looked at as kind of a disad card disadvantage, but a lot of times you get back the card that card disadvantage by having the tempo lead, which is kind of like the, the push and pull of a Hearthstone game in general. 
Um, we have one zombie chow, uh, and that's basically a tech card. It's like if I have one zombie chow, it hit, helps my win rate against aggro that much more. I mentioned that uh, this deck is pretty weak against aggro, so just having that one zombie chow can help a bit. And um, even stuff like you know you're playing against a mech mage, and they, they play mirror entity or they, they kill off their mad scientists to get themselves mirror entity, and you say zombie chow heals yourself back up actually so it's like that's a great card to have against that it's a great it's basically it's like it's an anti-aggro card and even against a control matchup you can just throw it if you can get on turn one it's still something that can help you with tempo while well, i'll go with a classic card in this deck um helps you basically ramp up gives you one minute every single turn and worst case scenario uh you'll be using on 10 to get another card anyway which so like two two mana cycle card which is not the most ideal spot you want to be using it, um, but just for those times where you get it on turn two, you can really just, uh, you know, push your opponent out of the game essentially. Um, Wrath is a nice card because you can either cycle it for a card when you need to, uh, because this card, this deck can sometimes run out of cards if you don't draw your ancient lores. It can also just be removal. Um, it's another thing to kind of deal with aggro, so it's it's multifaceted. Um, it's really. Basically, you run Wrath because there's really don't no other good removal in Druid, and you, you need at least some removal spells in the deck, so you, you pretty much need Wrath. Um, Savage War is there for the burst. You can use Savage War, obviously, with Force of Nature. You can use Savage War when you have several minions on the board to push some damage. Um, in certain situations, if, you, if you're stuck and you have nothing else to do, Savage War can kind of help you do trades, help you with math, you know, help, help you guys trade up a little bit so you're not so behind on the board. Uh, that kind of thing. So, um, a lot of really good players can use Savage Roar in really unique ways and to kind of help their board position. And, you know, a lot of amateur players kind of save Savage Roar uh, for like that kill at the end and then it's stuck in their hand the entire time because they can never get the board. Whereas, you know, more experienced players, um, you could say pro players, they uh, use Savage Roar to gain that board control, and then they can push for damage afterward, which is really important. Um, Big Game Hunter, Druid doesn't have removal for huge creatures, so Big Game Hunter is more or less essential. Um, you're not going to be, unless you really just temple your opponent out of the game, um, you need, you're going to need Big Game Hunter at least once to deal with um, something like Control Warrior, or, or even just like another Druid who plays um, Rag or Dr. Boom. And a lot of aggro decks even run uh, Dr. Boom these days, or since the beginning of GVG, I should say. So Big Game Hunter is pretty essential. You're going to be stuck in a lot of situations without uh, Big Game Hunter. Um, Shade and Axe Ramus is another... It's kind of like a ramp card in a sense because you're getting a big minion early on. If you just wait a few turns, that minion turns big. So if you do something like Innervate Shade and Axe Ramus, all of a sudden now you have like a 5-5 a five, five on turn 3, or 4-4 four, four on turn 3, 5-5 five, five on turn 4.5, or 3.5-4. So it's kind of like you can use it with your ramp to make it a bigger earlier. So it's, it's kind of like the same thing. Um, and the, the biggest thing is that you want to use your Savage Roar. Um, or you want to get to the point where you're trying to kill your opponent with Savage Roar. So Shade Axe Ramus is one of those things where your your opponent is probably not going to kill. It's probably going to have a really hard time killing Shade Axe Ramus uh, before um, you get to hit their face. If you ever get to that point. Sometimes you have to reveal it, sometimes you have to like use it you have to uh, trade it with something else when you're maybe you're a little behind trying to get uh, gain back board control. But that's I mean that's the that's the strength of shade. You can use it many different ways. Um, there are certain situations where it's weak, like it can die to, you know, consecrate later in the game, or it can die to like you know, a, any sort of AoE later in the game. Um, but for the most part it's a really it's it, it's hard to get rid of, and if you use it correctly in the late game, it's still annoying to get rid of. And in the early game, it's almost impossible to get rid of, uh, depending on the class you're facing. Swipe, again, another removal card. Um, it's basically the only AoE that Druid has. Um, you can get rid of one minion, you can get rid of several minions if you're playing as aggro. Um, it's pretty much a must include, and it's also some extra reach if you need it to kill your opponent. Also goes through taunts, obviously, so you can go straight to the face. Keeper of the Grove, it's just amazing card. Um, just the ability to be anti-aggro by killing uh, minions, or to be kind of like a pseudo wrath where you kill off a minion who has, like, say, like a Lothab has a, is a five-two because it just killed your sludge Belcher. Um, like you could just use your keeper to kill it off instead of you know throwing your own Lothab and then it just dies uh, to the Lothab, so uh, it can be used for that. It can also be used for Silence, and Silence is really important in a lot of situations. Um, 
I mean, there's just so many things that, that can be sentenced that can help you out. Uh, Case of Mystic is a tech card. Uh, again, it's anti-aggro. Typically, you're going to be wanting this card against Spec Mage and um, any sort of hunter, whether it be mid-range or face hunter. This is another card to, to have to um, help you in those matchups. Um, uh, again, you could... Uh, so for the case of Mystic and the Zombie Tower, you can replace those for like higher end cards if you you don't really uh, you don't want to be gearing your deck towards aggro. You just want to have like a more well rounded deck. This get this is like a little little kind of anti as anti aggro as mid range shooters can be. I mean, you could go even farther and put a couple Zombie Tiles in, but it's um it's pretty much geared toward being anti aggro a little bit. Um, you can kind of, like I've seen a deck that replaced Zombie Tower and Case of Mystic. This is a, Mostly this exact same deck, but instead of those two cards, it's Doctor Boom and Rag. Just to show you kind of range, you can make mid-range uh, Druid. Pilot Shredder has been shown to be one of the best four drops in the game, so we put it in there. It's a really good aggressive card. Uh, Druid the Claw, uh, great for its first ability, can be defensive or offensive. Um, Lotheb is great for a variety of reasons. Nice five five shuts down things like um, uh, Miracle or Oil Rogue for a turn. Shuts down. You know, just plenty of uh, classes in certain situations because they can't play uh, spells for a turn. And it's a nice fat body for you. Sludge Belcher, um, again, being a little bit defensive, you could play things like Spectral Knight. Um, but, you know, with a lot of face hunters these days, I think Sludge Belcher would be nice. One thing you could do is run Harrison Jones um, at the 5 spot. I already have 5 five mana minions, so uh, it's a little bit much to think to have Harrison in there. Uh, and I think that Sludge Belcher does a good job of dealing with things like Hunter, whereas War is already a good matchup. So uh, we've not included the Harrison. Uh, Force Nature, you know, it can be removal, uh, but mostly it's used to kill the opponent. And uh, Sylvanas is a great card to kind of screw up your opponent. If you're playing like a Druid Mirror, for instance, it, it automatically costs them four mana just to make her just to get rid of her death rattle and she's still a 5-5 which is really nice so you're basically getting better in the trade there um it's really if they don't have silence it's really really annoying for your opponent even if they don't have minions on the board like for instance a rogue rogue lots of times they want to uh use their si7 to kill stuff off as the last blow and they can't do that with Savannah because it's just 6 to 7. So a lot of times Rogue has to use two spells just to kill Savannah and then play some card and sometimes they don't have the man to do that. So even when you're playing on an empty board it can be a decent card. Uh, just be careful when playing in certain situations where it's too easy to kill. Like if your Rogue opponent has you know a deadly poisoned dagger they just have to backstab it and you know now you traded six man for zero. So <laughs> uh, try to be a little bit careful about playing on every single open board. Black Knight is nice because I mean obviously you can take uh, apart any sort of any taunt, and it basically makes it so it's not. I mean we don't have a bunch of uh, high end in this deck, but with Black Knight at least we get some nice value, get some nice removal. So for playing you know more of a control deck, we just boom we get rid of a taunt, and that provides us a tempo, and that's kind of like a replacement. Um, for having a bigger card like Ragnaros or Dr. Boom, which can be BGH, Black Knight, can't really be, that can't happen to that. Uh, Ancient Lore, one of the best cards in the entire game, um, gets you two cards or heals you. Uh, I would say about 80% of the time you want to be drawing the cards, um, unless you're real, unless you really, really looks like you're going to die, or if you have, or if you're um, a really, really experienced player and you know a matchup really well and you know that. So for some reason the cards aren't going to help you and the healing is going to help you more. Um, that's really the only time that you want to heal. Um, obviously you heal if you're like dead on the board as well. But um, yeah, try just try to go for cards most of the time. Um, and Ancient Lore basically makes things like Wild Growth and Innervate viable because um, you use that ramp to ramp up and it's a little bit of card advantage but you get the card advantage right back with Ancient Lore. Um, like say, you know, you innervate an Ancient Lore on turn 5. That's a 5 mana for 5-5 five, five draw card, basically, is what the exchange happens there. And that would be one of the best cards in the game. You know, 5 mana 5-5 five, five draw card is... That's that's a normal body for 5-5, five, five, and yet you're drawing a card still. It's pretty crazy, uh, some of the combos that you can do with this. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, let's get into a couple games. Uh, the... the here, hold on, let me just... Uh, Fix the placement of the sex not that's not right in the middle. Um, so the the ladder just reset. So we're I think we're at rank 16 or so. 
Um, if you hit Legend the season before, it puts you at 16. So yeah, we're at 16. Um, but if you look, I mean, there's a bunch of guys right here. Um, all of these guys were Legend the season before. Um, anyone 16? Basically, well, I don't know what it's... Anyway, both, most of these guys, this guy already made Legend because he played, pulled an all-nighter. But all these guys are pretty much Legend. So even if we face, you know, a fellow... Um, rank 16 player is probably going to be um, someone who was legend this season before. So these are de definitely these going to be probably high level games. Um, we might get you know matched up against someone who's a little bit lower ranked, but or typically lower ranked I should say. Uh, but a lot of times uh, this early in the season, um, if you're rank 16 or so, you're probably it's probably because you're a legend the season before. All right. Versus Rexa. Um. Let the hunt begin. I must protect the wild. Okay, so we're facing a hunter, and I think that even. Hmm. Okay, so the mulligan. You want your ramp. So looking at the deck, let's let's take a look at the deck. You want your ramp. You want your removal against an aggro deck like this. Even if it's mid range, it, you can usually get a fast start and kill you. Uh, you want your removal, like wrath. So you want Wrath, Innervate, Wild Growth, maybe Shade, but, and sometimes uh, Keeper of the Grove too, if you're going second. Um, but you don't, going first is a little hard to keep. But this, I only have one of this card in my entire deck, and I feel like it's almost certainly going to get value. So I'm going to take a gamble and keep this 4-drop, because it might really swing the game in my favor. Keeper of the Grove is okay to get, but overall this card, this uh, draw is pretty bad for us. Oh, we, let's change our um, our card back. Actually, I think we have a new one, right? Yep, there we go. Ragnaros. Yep. So this looks like it's a uh, face hunter if you just playing this guy out. This is good for us though, uh, that he only had this to play um, on turn one. Like for instance, Leprechaun would have done some more damage to us. This guy, he basically only did one damage to us um, because we were able to kill it right away. Um, usually does two damage and possibly even more if we can. Uh, kill it if he's able to buff something. To my side. So here we got the Leoc, which is the best one for us, uh, pretty much by far. Okay, so even though it's turn three, wild growth is still good here. Um, but we don't really have a turn five play, unfortunately. But still, wild growth will is uh, pretty. It helps us pretty much. So at this point, we kind of need to play something, so we're probably going to play this. Well, we could just kill it off with this. Our options are this, but the thing is, this probably trades with this anyway. The thing is, I could use this later. I think I'm going... Uh, hmm. This is pretty tough. My options are either kill it with this and my hero power, or do this. Um, the thing is, if I play this and, like say hero power that guy, maybe he wall fighters and kills my guy and does more damage to me. Hmm. But then in that situation I can just wrath the wolf rider. Um I think because this guy's more expensive, we're gonna play the more expensive thing. We're gonna go with the more expensive option. Because this we can maybe fit into future turns, whereas this is much harder to fit into future turns. So as a face hunter, he wants to use his hero power as much as possible, um, because he, he just wants to kill us as fast as possible, and, and he's not even going to bother trading with me. So here's the situation where um, Harris and Jones would actually be good. This would have been really nice last turn, because I could just kill it off anyway. Um, but looks like we're just going to do this. And, well, we have a couple options. We could play this and then just hero power. Every damage really counts. Yeah, I think we're going to do this because in the end, Sylvanas is going to be trading the entire time anyway. Um, the one advantage to Sylvanas is like if he starts flooding the board, I could kill one thing and then two turns later, I could uh, maybe take one of his guys. But um, I think getting the one damage or the one uh, health here is important. And this guy can typically trade with anything in the Hunter's Arsenal, so I'm just going to go ahead and play this guy. 
uh, so I can sneak a hero power in. A lot of times you want to be playing your most powerful minion, but this is a really special, or not special, this is a very unique matchup um, where we're trying to just, you know, not die. <laughs> this is this, the name of the game in this matchup is just, just try not to die and try to hold them off as long as possible. Um, at some point though, like, they're going to, you, you can't, as a mid-range druid, you can't be defensive the entire time. So here's a case where we can just case and mystic and take his guy, take this guy's, uh, secret. What's the wolf rider? Just kidding. Okay, so he didn't do a lot of damage to us that turn, which is really important. The light does not so we take that. Well played. Misdirection, okay. Nature's Interesting. Misdirection is really rare in, uh, in Hunter. Um, it's basically he's trying to confuse me and make me think that it's a explosive trap, and then maybe in future turns I screw up, I clear the board, and then I start hitting base, and maybe I hit myself. This isn't the worst, I would oh, say. Okay, that's really bad for us because oh, he's gonna trade. Interesting. So this dies to explosive no matter what, and I want to swipe this turn. Do I want to swipe this turn? Yeah, I do. I want to get rid of this two damage, so I want to swipe this turn. And then giving the extra bow is not a big deal. Well, is it a big deal? It probably is a big deal, actually. Um, but I kind of want to start swinging. It could also be Snake Trap. What? But if he has another misdirection, like I'm really confused. I'm like wondering if this might be actually be misdirection. So we also need to think about like how fast can we actually kill this guy this is almost certainly we're going to use for healing that's what I'm thinking about right now is like how do I fit this and this in I don't if I had 9 mana I could innervate into 11 mana and do that um, I do need a this, this is 2 damage this is an extra 3 damage um, hmm. for no one. this is kind of tough You know what, I don't want to give him the extra bow charge right now, so I'm going to do this first. I'm going to kill myself. I play that. Um, so, it's kind of iffy whether I should have played the zombie Cho, but... I mean, I think I can use this to uh, kill him with the seven door, essentially. We'll see what happens. Put this apple on your head. Hmm. So let's let's count some damage. Um, we have uh, this is nine. This, assuming this size to explode, so we're not sure what this is, but it's probably explosive. This is nine, ten, eleven. Uh, plus 4 is 15, and then all this together would be uh, 5 times 2. So how much was that? 4, 9, 11, 15, plus 10. Should be game. Right so we're going to see what this is. Yep, explosive. So now our zombie child actually did get some damage in. Where shall I strike? And that should be game. So there are a couple of decisions there that could have gone, um, you know, either way. Um, you know, there's that game was kind of interesting because there were a lot of turns where there wasn't a quote-unquote correct play. Like I could have used swipe uh, last turn. I could use. I could have done a few different things, but in the end, I decided that since I wasn't going to, since I wanted to heal as fast as possible, 
Um, since that was the most expensive card in my hand, uh, the Ancient Lord that is, and I knew I needed to use that to win the game, um, I decided to go with the most expensive thing first, and maybe I could uh, finish the game out by, you know, using the, the removal in my hand or using whatever I top deck, which happened to be a card that gave me the win. And when I played the Zombie Chow at the last minute there as the rope was, rope was burning, uh, that was basically um, to try to... Hold on, a minute, how much time is this going? Um, 25 minutes. Okay, we, we could probably play another game. Um, so as the rope was going, I was thinking, well, if this is Explosive Trap, I can probably actually get more damage in with the Zombie Chow, even though he heals my opponent over time. And um, I also thought, if he's using some of his damage to kill my Zombie Chow, then that's less damage to my face. So that's another thing. All right, we're facing other hunter. And um, at this point in the, in the ladder, it's probably going to be face hunter again. So uh, none of these are really good. This is more of an aggressive card. It's not really good to keep um, against a hunter like this. So again, we're looking for our removal and we're looking for our ramp or our zombie jump. One of those five cards essentially. And if we get something like keeper, it's a little better than. Um, than uh, the other guy anyway. So we have a we have a couple pieces of removal. We don't side isn't the greatest um, because usually the the things that face hunter kills you with are things like wolf fighter and they already do damage to the face. So you're basically you know getting rid of a three mana minion with a four mana spell. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, coin he kill this. Yeah, we're gonna use our hero power because our wrath can be used to kill something uh, a little bigger, like like mad scientist, for instance. Even though even though mad scientist, it seems like you don't want to kill it, you actually do because it's just gonna hit you for two every single time. And usually, the trap that you that he gets out of it is uh, an explosive trap, and the explosive trap does two damage to you one time, um, whereas you know the mad scientist oh, trap damage. So yeah, the reason why we hero power there is because we can't kill this with our hero power, and we don't want to be taking damage the entire time. So. We're gonna go and just wrap this. The other thing we could have done is just pass turn one, and so that so that we could uh, coin to one of these guys on turn three. But in that sense, in that uh, case, we'd be taking a lot of damage. We'd already be down to about 21 or so if we did that. So here we're just gonna go ahead and proc this uh, this trap right now. Do nothing better to do, and it's better to proc the trap now. Before he uh, gets a bow, he gets uh, extra charges on it. So next turn we're probably looking oh, with Greg. Sorry, <laughs> we're probably looking at silence in this guy so that we can kill him off the next turn, and then we'll mm -hmm. belcher the turn after that. And we're absolutely silencing that now because it's a. Um, we're silencing two things, and we're silencing the extra damage, and we're silencing the two spires that come up. Um, he should really attack because he has um, at least two more eagle horned bows in his, in his deck, and he wants to do as much damage as possible. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and silence this guy. There's a possibility of killing it and then swiping it later. That doesn't make any sense though, because we're, we're reducing it to one damage anyway. And if he, he could kill command this turn, um, before I get to kill it off, but that's a little bit rare. Um, kind of a rare situation. You really want to be using kill command at the end of the game. You want to be using your um, your charge minions earlier to kind of contest the board, essentially. So it looks like he's going to try to kill this. Interesting. Okay. So he views this as a threat to his uh, spider. So, okay, interesting. So he's gonna hit my face, but he's gonna throw away. He's gonna attack the spider. Okay. All right. So we're a little bit trouble here because we're pretty far down in health. Um, I think our best chance of winning is playing this card and hoping that he doesn't have a silence. Because if we try to swipe here, we're never going to get any damage to his face. So if he has a silence here, then that's unfortunate, but um, we 
we could use removal to kill this guy, but we're not getting board presence, and he's gonna kill us pretty soon. We need to, so we need to kill him before he kills us, essentially. So we're gonna take a little bit of risk here. If he has an owl, we basically lose the game. But I think most of the time, if we play this, uh, we lose the game. So. So, um, this is a little bit annoying, because we're going to have to like use this to attack eventually, but it does damage to us, and we, um, it kills this guy off so he can charge into our face, which is a problem. And no matter what, this guy charges into us anyway. What we could do, actually, is play, it's just swipe the face and then play this guy. And then, just to keep this guy up, so that, like, yeah, he, like, yeah, this will eventually die to explosive anyway, but he can't, um, he can't charge us right now, you know? So I don't think, I think keeping this up might be a good idea. If we do attack with this, we'd be attacking to here, then we hero power and play Lothip. But if he has a charge, then it's pretty bad for us. So I think the play actually is going to be... Swipe the face, and play a Shade of Max Ramus. We could have also Hero Powered um, to heal us up a little bit, but we kind of need to kill him as fast as possible, and we need to just hope we draw into Savage Roar here. So this is probably a charger or a kill command. He wants me to play into that guy, I'm guessing, so I think we're going to just swipe this again and play this guy. We're getting dangerously close to, close to dying, but he can't charge us at the moment, which is a big deal. And we're again, we're just hoping that we draw um, Force Nature so that we can kill him off. And he's doing the hero power return thing. Um, this could be kill command, this could be charger, like I said. Uh, so that wouldn't be lethal yet, so it could make sense for him not to use it right now. Huh. So let's start, start counting some damage, shall we? Uh, this is 4-8. Um, I pretty much can't attack yet. If we played both of these guys using Innervate, then that would be, uh, this would be 5 next turn, so 9, and then 10, and then we'd actually have lethal the turn afterward. Or, let's see, this is, this is 9, we play, say we play only this guy, so that would be 9 and 14 and 15, hmm. plus 6, okay, so that actually wouldn't be enough. So we kind of need to have both these guys on the board. So we're, here's what we're going to do, we're going to do this. I see you. Innervate the I have no time for games. This Lotha makes still makes it hard for him to kill us because kill command knock us eight. Um he'd probably need a couple of chargers in order to kill us. Um so actually we're gonna he needs a really specific set of cards to kill us right now. So we're actually in a pretty decent spot, I would say. So next turn we can do this, and we're gonna have 5, 10, 15, um, yeah, 5, 10, 15, 19, and then we have game uh, using this. Of course, we have to attack with this first. Or attack with anything first, actually. Um, so that these guys don't die. And actually, this guy kind of has to die so that we can get the, the room on the board to play.
Okay, he's thinking, which means he probably doesn't have lethal, or actually he might have lethal, but it's a complicated lethal. Um, in this situation, it would be kind of complicated. You need to get the right thing to charge in this guy, etc. So yeah, that that innervate didn't seem like a great card, but it actually ended up being really good in that situation. That ended up being really bad for us. Do we still have lethal somehow? Um, we can Black Knight that guy. 5, 10, 15, 19, 20 isn't quite what game. Um, if for some reason this is freezing trap, okay, th but the fact that he, he, he rolled that was the fact that he rolled that was lucky for him, but it was really lucky that we got this, because now we're probably not going to die anyway. Um, so it doesn't really matter what we send back. I don't. I just really don't want this to be Zoomsayer, so, um, or anything really. So we're just going to attack with this guy. The end is close. And we don't want to die, and we're going to win next turn anyway. So we're just going to restore 5 health, do a power. And not attack. We're not going to give him a chance to win the game. Because again, he has to get through this, so it's kind of hard for him to do anything. Um, so what could he do now? He could have Unleash the Hounds and um, Kill Command or something like that could be good. Okay, so Owl. So he's, he's gotten sick of this little taunt. He doesn't want to deal with it anymore. Um, so I'll, so double kill command and hero power would kill us right now, but it's unlikely, and it's a pretty easy math to do, so it's not, um, I don't think he has it, unless he's, you know, slow playing us or trying to BM us or something. Ready to ride. Okay, that's not lethal yet, unless he has Leroy, no, Leroy doesn't do it. Okay, so he's gonna do that. He's gonna trade. Okay, I don't think that's a great move for him because. Okay, hold on. So this is. He, it's kind of be hard for him to win unless he draws a lot of damage because I can just hero power to to cancel out um, half of his hero power. Anyway, uh, that aside, this is 10, 15, uh, plus this is 21. So we're one damage off lethal. Is that correct? I think that's correct, right? Uh, so we hit, <laughs> so let me just, just, just count again, this is 10, this is 15, plus 6 is 21, plus this is 23, that's unfortunate. Um, so he did a good job preventing lethal, but I don't think he has any chance of winning this game. It's already, we've already shown that this is in Snake, Snake Trap. Um, so, do we attack or do we not attack? Um, we kind of have to attack, right? Yeah, sure. We'll attack with this guy. It might be misdirection, so we'll attack with the small one. Because, I mean, we're, we're gonna have to attack with him. Anyway. Let none survive. And. So, at 9 health, even Leroy Jenkins doesn't kill us right now, so I think the game is over. And Leroy Jenkins is pretty much the most damage that, that, uh, here, that uh, I hear that I guess he can play another trap. Okay, we win. Played. Alright, so unfortunately ran two hunters, but that's more or less what you're gonna see on ladder these days. Um, with uh, Black Rock Mountain coming out, I'm not sure that um, we're going to be seeing less face hunters. People will be trying uh, more decks, uh, but face hunter I think will still be a viable deck to play because um, there weren't really many anti-aggro cards. I, I guess there were a couple. Drew of the Flame, for instance. Um, I guess we could, we could. What we could do is look at some of these um, Black Ark Mountain cards to uh, to uh, see what would help against um, something like face hunter. And. Um, None of these really. Emperor Thorson kind of, but it needs to 
needs to get late in the game. So something like Drew the Flame or Blackwing Tendish would be a nice early game card to combat that. M King Boss, not it would have to be a new archetype for that to be something. Um, Dragon Consort in a sense where you can get your guys out faster, but there's no real defensive dragons. Um, something like Flame Waker, uh, maybe, and uh, something like Blackwing Crumpter. So there could be. There's a couple cards in here, like the Dragon. Like um, I'm looking specifically at Drew the Flame or Blackwing Technician to be able to be a little bit anti-aggro. But other than that, you're going to see a lot of Face Hunters still. And so yeah, this I think this was um, good to show that even with a deck like Druid, which is typically weak against Face Hunter, if you play your cards right and you play smart, um, you can win the game. Um, if you're playing against a more control deck, we basically try to just play our cards on curve. Um, less trying to stay alive, more trying to play your your biggest, uh, strongest minions, and then basically uh, play your combos to win the game. Um, so both of those games, I use Ancient Lore for healing, but that was a very specific match where we're trying to stay alive. Um, outside of that match, if you're usually going to use Ancient Lore for um, for drawing cards, so. Uh, there, that is that. Um, thank you for joining me. That is the mid-range druid deck guide, and I'll see you guys next time.